Well, when they told us we were in the group individually, nobody else knew who was going to be in it. And they asked us, who do you think is going to be in and who do you want to be in? And all of these people were who I wanted to be in. So it was really good, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I didn't want any of them to be in. <laughs> And I'm really disappointed. No, no, it's fantastic. No, I love them all to bits. And I'm glad that I'm in the band with them. Oh. <laughs> I heard about the auditions through my brother and sister. They'd heard about it and they went along. And um, they got through to the recalls. And I think I went along on the third day of recalls just because I was working. And I wanted to check it out and see what it was all about. Um, but when I went along... Yeah. I got quite a surprise. Mylene, please, darling, stand there for me. No, stay there for us. No, 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 no. What are you going to sing for us? My heart will go on. Thank you very much. In your time. Quietly, please. Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. I was surprised at how much production was on board. There was a huge crew there. I suppose a, a lot of people must have found it quite overwhelming, but um, I was surprised it was very intense and there was a hell of a lot going on. You get used to auditions and like I don't think you ever get over the nerves because in a way they help you, they kick in, the adrenaline kicks in, that helps you. So I think I've learnt to become more aware of it and just keep it down. I've, there have been situations where I've just let nerves get the better of me. My heart and my heart will go on and on. Well done. And thank you very much. You're one of the first people that have sang that song with a smile on their face. <laughs> thank you for that. I think at every audition you go to, you sort of try and clock the judges and try and figure out what they're saying and their body language. You're never, ever going to know what they're saying. And the best thing about this programme is that when you watch it, there are situations that you remember where they were huddled together and writing things down, and now you know what it was they were saying. I thought she's a stunning looking girl with a stunning personality and a crazy voice. It's unbelievable. It's actually a bit too good to be true. Actually. You just put them on like this, this pedestal of playing God, and like half the time they're just normal. They, they laugh at the same things you laugh at and cringe at the same things you do. Um, but you forget about that in those circumstances. You're suddenly saying, OK, here's my career. What, what, where are you going to put it? Very excited by your performance. Very excited by you. We'd love you to stay and do that same performance again. Use your camera lens. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Yes. Delighted. Thank you. Thank you. Usually when you do an audition, you walk on a stage or you walk into a room, do your audition to the camera and go. But you, it was like, nice you know, Ed TV. You could never turn them off. And they were always following you, but that's what docu-soaps are about, I guess. Um, the, the weirdest thing was that when you did need your time to yourself, you couldn't have it. So you never had a chance to gather your thoughts. And, um... In a way, that's good. I think that I think that was part of the test that they were trying to just see how you coped. I don't know what you're looking for. I know you're looking for a band or you're looking for a group of singers. Um, I am a singer. I need to be put with group of. So here I am. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Can I go now? Gotcha. I'm really late for my rehearsal. For me, the whole audition process has been serious from the start because, um, yeah, the cameras were there and they did make it really intense, but you can't take away from the fact that an audition is an audition and you're always looked at all the way through the whole process, whether there's a camera on you or not. And um, I think my attitude to the whole thing really was just that, you know, it's serious from the very, very beginning. The Cardiff auditions were the first real auditions that I'd ever been to. Um, I was walking up to the gates and I wasn't even sure that I was going to go in. My name's Noel Sullivan. I'm 20 years old and um, I'm from Cardiff. Um, I'm here today. I uh, want to be a pop star because I'm fed up of being skint. <laughs> when I saw the first uh, set, set of five get up and sing, I thought, oh, how am I going to do that? OK, when you're ready. It's amazing how you can speak right to my heart Without saying a word You can light up the dark. I wasn't worried about the people, I was worried about the cameras because I'd never worked in front of TV cameras before. I can never explain What I hear when you don't say a thing 
The smile on your face. General standard in Cardiff, I thought, was was fantastic. Um, there were so many people there who I just thought, uh, there's no chance of me get, getting any further past these lot. They were great. The touch of your hand says you catch me whenever I fall. But you say it best when you say nothing at all. Um, after I'd sung my first round in the audition, um, I, I just thought, no, nah, there's no way I'm going to do it. I was so nervous. And I remember being sat in the, in the five, just thinking, oh, please let them pick me, please let them pick me. No, I really like Noel. I like him. Yeah, good I did. luck as well. Oh, yeah, no, no, he's good. Um, I'm only going to ask one person to come back, and that's Noel, or if you can stay, Noel. Um, we're going to be asking you to double up with someone else. We're going to ask you to do another track. When it came to the duets, I was uh, an, one of an odd number, so they left me sat on my own for 15 minutes which seemed like an hour because it was just all of these people around me singing Don't Go Breaking My Heart all the different times and I was started to rock back and forth a bit. <laughs> and um, they, they left me for a while and then they started to watch them back and they sent me out in the corridor for five minutes with Zara and what we came back with was just abysmal. How they let me through, I just don't know. Oh, I gave you my key. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, nobody knows it, nobody knows when I was down. I was your clown. Ooh, nobody knows it, nobody knows. Right from the start, I gave you my heart. Oh, I gave you my heart. We didn't have Go and get your photograph taken, thank you very much. In the final round, we had to sing into a camera, which was more nerve-wracking for me than, than singing to the judges. Cos you got the kind of loving that would be so smooth, yeah. Give me your heart and make it real, or else forget about it. Um, and I remember afterwards, I was just shaking and I had this pain in my chest because I'd given so much. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm shaking like, yeah, shaking like my tongue. <laughs> um, we love Noel. Brilliant. Getting back Terrific. to the job Biggest in there. Biggest cheer of the yeah. day. Yeah. Biggest cheer of the day. Very popular. When I was selected for Birmingham, I didn't really realise that this was all going to be as big as it is. So, yeah, I was really pleased, but I would have been more pleased if I'd known what I was actually letting myself in for. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I can't believe it. Um, cool. Shh, I want to be a pop star. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs>found out about the auditions by looking in the stage. I used to get the weekly stage and look through for all the different adverts and stuff and I spotted it. So I called the uh, advert up, found out about the Manchester auditions and rang up my mates and said, come on, come along, it'll be really good. I'm feeling really nervous, really nervous, because there's just like loads of people there and everyone's watching and it's like, oh God. Everyone's like sort of saying, oh, she's good, she's not. So I'm feeling really sort of <gasps> not really with it at the moment. Don't even know what song I'm going to do yet. I'm like, oh no, which one? And I had Baby One More Time prepared to sing. Got up there, split second before I started going, when the world leaves you feeling, and just carried on with it. You can count on me, I will be there for you. Suzanne, I think, was a very good, lovely yes. little performer. Mm -hmm. um, you could almost see her in this Club 7, couldn't yep. you? Yeah, I definitely want her back. Good. Oh, my duet. Oh, it was wicked. It was great working with somebody who was so talented as well and was so determined as y yourself. You know, you s some people you can get who th you're not really sure whether they want it or not. But the person I worked with, he was cool. It was really good to work with him. And we did a good job, if I say so myself. I'm very excited. It's sort of like you've got through that first barrier, then you're 
getting through the next barrier, it's like you're getting near every time until you know you first walk in it as in to say, oh, it's a bit of fun, you know, a bit of experience, see how it goes. But because you're getting further and further, it's more like, right, I want this and I'm going to get it. Well, the second time I sang Creech on the backdrop day, I just was, I was completely nervous and was on coffee because I got up really early in the morning and I started singing it and I went, climb every mountain, climb every mountain high and rich for the stars. We'd like to thank uh, you all for coming, obviously, uh, and a special thanks to the back line. We're not going to ask you to come to Birmingham. <laughs> I've got through, but I'm, I know I'm going to be dead nervous again for this next part. But I'm, I'm enjoying, hopefully, going to do the dancing part now because I, I like doing that um, and doing the harmonies. I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, well, it was about seven o'clock in the morning. Me and my mum arrived there um, in Manchester because we thought there was going to be so many people queuing up for the auditions, and we just basically wanted to get there because it was the second day as well. And it was absolutely freezing cold. You would not believe. We had to stand outside for like two hours. I'm Kim. I'm from Wigan. And um, hey, I was Wiganers. You know what I mean? Down the pier. <laughs> um, all I, all I do is sing. That's all I've done since I left school. Never done anything else. So I'm a bit of a dolly. <laughs> and to be honest, I wasn't really aware of what it was about at first. You know, when we were stood outside, we didn't really have a clue. And. You know, nothing could prepare could have prepared us for what we walked into. Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. Every time I'd auditioned before, it was always by myself in a little room away from anybody else, and to audition in front of everybody, you know, it was pretty nerve wracking because if you made a mistake, everyone was there to look at you and go, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And people were doing that. You have come to show you. Go on. Um, I'd also like to ask Kim to come back um, and Angela. Really yeah. excited. Really excited. And it's a great opportunity just to come back again. And mm. it's great just to get through, even if we don't get through again. Do you know what I mean? It's Experience. good to, to be this far out of so many people. Mm. So, cheers. They didn't even let me and my partner finish our song, and I wondered why. At first, they stopped us halfway through the duet, and I went, and I thought, oh no, what's the matter? Thank you. Well, get your pictures taken. Well done. <laughs> and they said, no, we, we'll see you tomorrow. And I was just like, well, oh, that's great. Really, really pleased, you know. The next day, we came, didn't know what to expect, and we had to sing um, to a camera. And there were people watching you. It's a bit awkward, and you know, people were getting up there, forgetting their words, forgetting the song they were supposed to be singing, and you know, it was really, really hard. And I didn't think I was going to get through even that day. I didn't think I was going to get through. So put Sam point you down, living the vida loca. That's good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Danny, we want to bring back. Danny, I'm going to ask two people to stay back. I'm going to ask Lauren to stay back and Danny. Have a think about that for me. Uh, Danny... For the first audition in London, I didn't nearly turn up. And the reason why that was because I had the flu that day. And I knew I had to get up really early in the morning, so I thought, I don't want to go. But then I opened my eyes in the morning and thought, well, I've got to give it a crack, because it could be the one, you know, this could be the one. Don't go breaking my heart. At the audition, we had to be paired off with a partner. She was really good. Loads of people around us were doing like oh, choreography and doing moves to this part and everything. So we just let it flow and just do it naturally and just kind of enjoyed it. You're both being judged by the judges and you're kind of relying on that person to make sure that you look good and vice versa. Um, after the duets, like, we'd both got through and so I knew that the next day that we had to sing on our own again, we was back on our own. And I'd sing in front of the camera like with black screens behind us. She's in the superstition, black cats and voodoo dolls. Singing straight to the camera was like really weird. Because you're used to singing to faces, but now you're singing to a lens. It's really weird. It was like one of the weirdest things I ever done. She has a new addiction for every day and night. When I walked into the room at Birmingham, I thought, wow, look, oh, look at all of these people who, you know, they must have been good to get 
there because I saw the standard of the people who were picked in Wales. It was funny because the people who were your competition in Wales suddenly then became your friends and it was like the Welsh group. The first group that I was put into was the Harmony group, which I was quite pleased about because that's one of my fortes, I think. I didn't think I'd get through the stages at Birmingham because there was such a vast number of people. I thought, how are they going to pick their final 30 from this massive amount of people? They'd seen me sing a bass line for a song and then, you know, a bit of naff dancing. <laughs> and I thought, there's no way, there's no way that I'm going to get through to the next day. And it's been tough. You've all worked really, really hard over the last two days. And I'm really, really happy to say you're all coming to the <laughs> I mean, we've got one group that looks terrific. Uh, with, I suppose, Kelly, Mylene, uh, Sally, Raymond and Kev. What's deceiving about the routine in Birmingham is that the day before I was told they'd had a very fast routine and um, obviously concentration levels have to be up for that and because the second day they did an All Saints routine which everyone suddenly thinks, oh this is mellow, this is more relaxing, I can enjoy this. Um, it's deceiving because the more simple things are, the more attention you have to put into it. It's, it's again, it's a really strange process how they did it. They really drew the whole thing out. London, Birmingham, they went across the entire country. And um, usually, yes, you do recalls and things, is what I've done before, but they don't drag it out even half as long as this one. So it's, it was like, literally, as soon as you've overcome one sort of obstacle, there's another one there. You've got to really get to the bottom of them. How are they going to get on with people? Will they fit together as a band? Uh, don't forget we're having a media day. We're also having uh, a drama day. So we're going to see how they interact and everything else. When I got to Birmingham, I thought this is going to be tough because everybody from the different cities had come together and I thought, I don't know what the composition is going to be like. I thought there's going to be so many gorgeous people there, so many talented people. I thought Birmingham was probably my best audition time because um, I really enjoyed doing the dancing, really enjoyed that part. And then we went to do the singing and I found out I was going, Ooh, ooh, all the way through. I thought, is this actually going to fit with the dancing? And by the time we put the two together, I was an emotional wreck. I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? I just felt like bursting into tears and going, I might as well pack my bags now. I could have done so much better. I was just like, ooh. When Nigel came in with his head down, I thought, I've not got it, I've not got in, I've not got in. And I'm really, really happy to say you're all coming to <laughs> I don't know what to do now. It's like, shall I scream or shall I just collapse and thank God the day's over with and go home and tell everybody or what shall I do? Shall I cry? I, I don't know. I'm just like gobsmacked. Everybody knew that we were all competing against each other. And that's really hard because you are really good friends with these people, or some of the people by then, even by then we were good friends. And um, it was like, oh, hang on a minute, this competition is so high. You look around the room and you think, are they going to be in, are they going to be in? And, you know, your nerves start to go. You start to, you start to get really nervous. And I had the start of a cold on the first day in Birmingham. I started getting a sore throat. And I thought, God, please don't fail me, please. Got a really sore throat and like can hardly talk, but they've given me the low part, which is good because I told him when I went in, I said, told him that I had a bad throat, and so he gave me the low bit. So that was really kind of him. <laughs> and when we were all waiting in a, um, to hear who was in the final 33, none of us knew whether we were staying or whether the people in the room were staying. We didn't have a clue at that moment in time. And that was really heart-wrenching, really. You know, looking around everyone's faces, they were deathly white. It's horrible. It's really horrible. I feel sick. I feel like throwing me. I just want to know what's going on. And I'm really, really happy to say you're all coming to... <laughs> Thank you.
And then I was told, don't ring your mum because we want to follow you home, we want a, genu a genuine reaction sort of thing, real reaction from them. And that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, because I had to lie to my parents on the telephone. Come on, oh. tell us. Put me out of misery, please. Mm. You know, when I spoke to you on the train, I told you I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I did. I'm going to talk. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't think any of us were prepared for what was coming, to be quite honest. Say, come on, Danny, come on. I left it myself because I couldn't get you together. built your points up in other areas. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But just get that confidence back up for London, OK? All right. See you later. Well done. The run-up to the auditions in London, I didn't really have time to think about them. One, I didn't really know what to expect. We were told, um, bring a week's worth of clothes, but I thought that would be tempting fate. So I brought three T-shirts, and um, after that, then I had some more sent to me, because I just, I'm not a superstitious or anything, but I, was, I just thought that would be too cocky, just to, to bring a whole suitcase and evening wear and things. Um, so I suppose in a way I wasn't that confident either. I just, I just waited and went with it, really. When I arrived in London, um, it felt a bit strange for me. It did feel a bit weird. It, it did feel a bit strange. But the, the girl I shared a room with was fabulous. She was really, really nice. And you make friends. Under those circumstances, you're in a room together, sort of 24-7. You do make friends really easily in there. There were some really good people there. The first day seems like a million miles away, but what I can remember, um, we learnt some basic harmonies, and then we learnt some um, a little more, more complicated as the day went on. The whole process, I, I believe, was just trying to blend the voices together because they chose the voices because they, you know, were individual and strong. Two or three really good voices in, in, in a band, so for me it's quite finite now, really seeing that, that person X from there and person Y from there that I like, which one actually has the better voice and a better range. Actually, we've got about four bands in this room, four or five bands, because there's so many different looks. Uh, I'm not just saying that, there's a lot of talent here, there really is, and there's some really, really good looks. And it's, I suppose, to be a matter of which looks gel, which voices gel. Um, I've only just heard some of the people now and just recognised some of the faces, so I'm just getting to know them all now, but again, like I said, there's five bands here. I do have favourites, I've got to be honest, I do. Do you want me to go through them yeah. with you? Okay, I like Marlene. Um, I like Mylene. She's done really uh, yeah. well. Happy. I'm very pleased with her. The thing known as the Green Mile has got to be one of the most harrowing things. Um, we, we sat in a room, basically, um, all 33 of us, and we'd just basically wait for them to call our names out and you'd have to parade down the Green Mile. And even that was harrowing because you think, am I walking properly? Am I walking too fast? Do I look too confident? Don't I look confident enough? It was ridiculous, the things that go through your head. Um, but because I was last on the list, I was number 33, I had to sit through everybody coming in and I had literally every emotion that they'd gone through. I was sitting there going through it too. But when you saw the tears, you just didn't know what was coming and by the time it got round to me walking down the Green Mile, I was exhausted. Um, being last and seeing everybody and seeing it all happen has been absolutely mentally crippling. It was alright to begin with, but because, like I said, because I'm last and I've seen every emotion you can imagine, it's, oh, it's yeah. really hard, actually. But you did really well today, really part of yeah. the team. Very yeah. happy. Yeah. You were saying we really gave well. you some feedback last week uh, yes. about the bonding side. Yes. About, you know, not over-performing as well. Yep. And I think you've taken that feedback really well and you've put it into practice today. I'm mm -hmm. delighted with really that. Your voice is great today, you sang really well. Today. So your only feedback now is keep up the good work. 
Thank, thank you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Bye. The only thing I can think about the Green Mile is the echoes. You walk down, you hear the squeaks of your shoes, and you see them sitting there, and you just think, this is the most bizarre thing. You couldn't go home at the end of it and sort of rant and rave to everyone about it. You'd have to go back to your hotel room and hear more about it from people who were there, or have a camera in your face. Well, from what I remember at Tuesday, we had to sing a solo song. I remember thinking there was a hell of a lot of talent in the room. And being very proud of that because, you know, you want to think that you are against the best. It's really good, and the people there were very, very good. Up you go, darling. I call you, I need you, my heart's on fire. I remember starting my track a bit low, um, because you know you don't get a chance to sort your key out. That was a chance for them to see the sort of music we were into and, um, and just, I don't know, just perform the tracks as best we could. Ooh, and it can be wrong. I certainly didn't feel confident because there were beautiful girls there and, you know, the guys were very confident and strong. You're simply the best. You're better than all the rest. You're better than anyone. Very good. We like the way that you're working with your colleagues now, and uh, we're delighted. Very happy. Yeah. That's you it. Did really well today. Love to see you tomorrow. Bye. That's it. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to work on? No. Very happy. Just keep up what you're doing. And tomorrow's all about getting on with your team members and everything. Sometimes you don't give so much away about yourself. I just wanted to just hide. I wanted to get in a hole and just say, look, judge me and let me go. The whole Darius situation, I know there's a bit of a following now that everyone's following the story, love him or hate him. Um, the one thing I remember is just being quite shocked at the whole sort of David Koresh thing going on. <laughs> it was a bit strange. Right. We're all talented people. We've all got it. We're all going to make it one day. We'll do it. Yeah? But we're going to make it in our own different way. We've got to learn from it. Nice to know you guys. A real pleasure. Honestly, I say that from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, good luck to him. Good luck to him. He's strong. He's a survivor. I don't think anyone has to worry about Darius. He is a survivor. Wednesday was really strange because... You know that psychologists are going to come in and question everything you do because they're looking at you as you work. So you start questioning everything you do to the degree I just thought this is so funny, you know. Am I, am I holding this pen properly? Am I in body language? You're really aware of everything. It's just bizarre. Other than that, we played some trust games. I just remember thinking the whole thing was very strange. It was like a PE lesson. I mean, the last time I've been with a group of people where you're having to take orders and listen to roll calls and be segregated into different groups for being good or bad is like school. And then playing these sort of games, crawling under buckets and over sort of rope. It was just, this is meant to be for a pop band. It's, it's telling me that my Lee, who was very quiet earlier on, has come out a lot more. And is prepared to take the lead and prepared to be directed in a very good way. You did get really tired. And I know that, again, that was part of the test because the idea being if you're in a pop group, you're never going to get time off. You're always going to be, you know, either having to perform or preparing to perform. When do you get your break? You don't. So I, I actually admired the way that they did put the whole thing together. They did think about that. They didn't make it easy because it's not easy, but it, it did wear you down. The press conference, they. It, it was, again, a really strange situation because they'd set it up so well that we didn't know when we walked into the room how many people were going to be there, and there was a significant amount. And um, they weren't kind with the questions. They did fire them at you. Mylene, can I ask you a question, Mylene? How, where do you stand on the legalisation of cannabis? My goodness, I mean, I don't really think that's really 
something that I can really have much to say about. I don't really know much it's about it, so I don't feel... Excuse me? It's a big political issue at the moment. Absolutely, and if I was a politician, I suppose I'd be sort of talking politics. Um, if I knew more about it, I'd feel very comfortable commenting on it. Until I do, I'd rather not comment on it. You know, now we've been lucky, we've had time to sit down and think, well, if I'm broached with this question, how will I deal with it? What's a sensible um, answer without, you know, w so that you can still be honest, but not sort of dig a hole for yourself. But at the time, I know that some people, you know, found it very difficult to get out of situations. With regards to how the press are, they are your friend, really, because they're the people that put you out there. If you didn't have them on your side or working for you, then, you know, you wouldn't even be out there. The Green Mile was definitely made for TV purposes, that, you know, the whole dragging it out and giving them more pain, the whole endurance thing, and I knew that. But it didn't get any easier knowing that, um, and because I was always last, it was just painful. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not meant to see us like this. We're meant to be completely oh controlled. Oh, God. Just go home and come back tomorrow. <laughs> yes, see you tomorrow. Well, see you tomorrow. well, well done. Well done on a good day. You did really well today. Really pleased with you. <laughs> oh, God. I walked in, I, I mean, I was the last one in, and I think they were absolutely exhausted. The panel seemed exhausted. And they just said, come back tomorrow. I mean... Really, this is... I can't even describe to you how I feel. I mean, I know there's, there's people in this room who know, but your stomach's just... You feel for everybody, and, and, and you still have to remember it's an audition process, and this is what happens at auditions. The attention on Friday to perform was really great. Everybody was very tired and very sensitive and fragile. That's how I felt. I felt just, you know, it wouldn't take much just to set me off and just want to just go and hide again in a little corner. Um, but everyone understood how everybody else was feeling. We were all called into a room and um, the people that weren't included in the final ten were left in another room, nice. but we didn't see it coming. And when it did actually come, it was a bit of a shock. We're here to say that uh, you're not in our ten. Can you face each other? Can you congratulate yourselves on being the final ten? Well done. Although I felt relieved to be in the final ten because I'd got that far, it's sometimes harder to get so close. You know, sometimes it's nice to be so off the mark that, you know, they can't... You, you can just say, well, I, I wasn't right from it, for it at all. But getting down to the final ten, you think, well, they've obviously seen something that's right, but can I keep that up? You don't know what they're going to do next. On the Monday morning, um, I just didn't know what to expect. I just can't wait. But I thought, right, this is it. We've got to, I've got to give it my all. When tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. Hopefully this week, the way it's being done, if we don't get that far or whatever, then, then we're going to be told why and, and how we can improve our performance and, and that'll be nice it'll be good to, to hear that from somebody who knows okay yeah very much very much I did that's all I wanted to get even at the party and stuff last night I just thought I want to be I want to just get in there and do it now how did you feel it went today really well I really enjoyed it yeah. good okay well we're very pleased with you um, we don't want to change you, but we want you to blossom a little bit more. You've got the ability, um, and we want to see more confidence, but not lose what Noel's got. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, I, I know. Oh, yeah, I know. When I went in for the first Green Mile, the judges gave me some really positive feedback. Um, it just made me think that they just asked me to boost my confidence and that made me think that 
maybe I was in with a chance. So when I came back the next day, I just tried even harder to give them what they wanted. You're stuck in my room, yeah, yeah. And if you sing... It's quite funny, two of the guys that I personally like, which are Noel and Danny, both sang the same song. And they both so sang it differently. Didn't they? My life to better suit your mood, yeah. Because you're so smooth. Because you're so smooth. his voice and he knows what he's doing with it as well which is um, I thought he was very yeah very controlled oh when Zara was rejected I was really really upset we'd met in Cardiff and from the Cardiff auditions we kept in touch and she's really cool and we get on really well and I'm sure I've got a friend there for a long time this, this whole experience for me has been with her and it's kind of quite hard to see that I just thought, oh, well, if she's gone, then how long is it going to be before I go? And, you know. <laughs> One of the green miles, I walked through the door and they went, see you tomorrow, doll, or something to that effect. And I just thought, oh, wow. <clears throat> Yeah. What's Noel doing tomorrow? He's coming back. Well, go away then. See you in the morning. Thank you. Bye. And that was it, you know. And then I felt really bad because all of these people were coming out and it's really difficult because you want to be happy about getting through but then everybody else is kind of like... They, they kind of hold back their feelings a bit because they don't want to upset anybody who hasn't because, you know, we've made some good friends. I enjoyed the press conference. Everyone in my group were bouncing off each other and laughing and making it quite light. Um, no comment. <laughs> I absolutely blurted out every answer that came along. I, I didn't think about what I was going to say. Some people are saying that you, you mimed on Top of the Pops last week. Yeah, oh, we did. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I now know that I should think before I open my mouth. The morning we received the roses, everybody was really down, and I just thought, oh, come on, I'll give it a go and see if I can cheer them up. Just be a knoll. Right, guys, <laughs> guys, 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 guys. Can I have your attention a moment, please? Thank you. Um, we had a delivery last night um, when we were down in the bar. Uh, they came to find us, and um, we opened it, but it actually said on the back after we'd opened it, <clears throat> to be opened and read to my friends as a group, whether they got through today or not. OK? Individually red rat roses, red rat rat red roses, and the card reads as follows. <clears throat> My newfound friends, <laughs> collectively I admire you. Individually I adore you. The path to success is a test for us all, but we'll all be stars in this life. I'll miss you all. Love, light, and eternal happiness. Darius. I rang home each day after auditions and spoke to my mum just to let her, whether or, uh, to tell her whether or not I was going through to the next day or not. Hello. 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 Hi, Mama. Hi, Mama. Mama. I'm just doing okay. I, I got through. I got through, like. <laughs> I'm in the last turn. <laughs> she called me a spiteful little. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah, I'm fine. I'm feeling 
like I'm really gonna mess up the singing today because my voice has gone even worse and I don't know what to do about it I really don't. I've just tried singing and I'm like it's too weak it's really too weak so oh I don't know what to do I really don't I just might as well just go home now I should just pack my stuff up I feel like crying I've got a sore throat, so I've now changed my song to what I did in Manchester to something else which is quite low, so I don't have to strain it, um, because at the moment them high notes are, are getting, feeling quite weak, so I, I don't want to damage anything there. Suzanne, what are you going to sing first on him? OK. You're licking your lips and blowing kisses my way. That don't mean I'm going to give it away. Baby, baby, baby. Oh, 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 oh. My body's saying, let's go. Oh, oh. I could tell by the judge's face that he wasn't that impressed. And you can just read the situation. I think her voice is, I don't know why she chose that song, because that is a low song. She's obviously you know, sung it in more or less the same key as the record. And she hasn't got a low voice, so she was losing it at the bottom. So why choose that song to do? Choose something higher. I think her voice lies higher than that. I, I don't know what they're looking for. I mean, they've told me they want my voice stronger, and, I, you, you know, I've tried it by keep, you know, keeping it low, the song, the song I chose, so... You have to wait and see. The first Green Mile, I can't even begin to find words to, to tell you how it felt. It was really, really scary. And I'd walk down and it was so silent, you could hear every bit of your, your that you walk in, you could hear everything, the creaks in the floor. How are you? Very nervous. I'd try to be cool, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, OK, I'll do that. And then when they told me I'd got through, I'd try to sustain the, the big, yeah! And I'd go, thank you, thank you. That, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, God, thank you so much. Oh, well really, thank you very much. Oh. And I'd walk out and I'd go, oh, thank God for that, thank God for that. <laughs> Getting down to the final ten on the Friday was absolutely really, really amazing. Can you face each other? Can you congratulate yourselves on being the final ten? <laughs> Oh, you know, I'm so glad I've just got this far now. You know, if I get in, that's an extra bonus. If not, then, you know, hopefully I can go on to do other things. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for, the, for that week, you know. Nobody knew how upsetting it was going to be or how, you know, how bad it was going to be. Because by the end of that week, I needed some Valium, to be quite honest. It was just so... It was just a really, really, really hard week. Um, but that first day, seeing everyone, it was just, oh, hi, yeah, big, you know, this, that, and the other. And it wasn't until we actually started work on the first day that the realisation started to kick in. Kimberly, very strong for me, one of the best girls. Yeah. Uh, and I was convinced I was going home. Some of us were waiting around there for nearly two hours to find out whether or not we were through, and that was really difficult. It's just so horrible when you feel sick, sick all the time. I've been awake since half past five this morning. I couldn't sleep after that. When I actually got my number called out and I opened that door and they're all looking at me as I'm walking up and I'm thinking, God, please, please, let me be all right. The first day was actually one of the toughest for me. I was so convinced I was going. But we think you're great. You've done really well today and we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you very much. I got up and I walked out. And the minute I walked out of the door, I just started to cry. I was hysterical crying. I didn't think I was going to get through. And then you sort of realise that, hang on a minute, we're going to lose people over these next few days, and this is going to be really tough, because you don't know what to say. You know, you're in and you want to be happy for yourself, but at the same time you feel guilty because that person's just been kicked out. Can you face each other? Can you congratulate yourselves on being the final ten? <laughs> well, in the run-up to the London workshop, it was weird because I just didn't know what to expect. What 
at all. I knew it was a workshop, but what did, what did that entail? I knew it had singing and dancing, but how kind of hard would that be? And, and I kind of realised that there was going to be harmonies, but I'd never done it before. And so the only thing that I could do was keep my voice intact. Danny Foster, that lovely smile. Mr. I'm Moonface. putting down Nikki. <laughs> Yeah? <laughs> you uncocked him? I'm not saying I've him personally. That's, yeah. But he has got that sensibility factor. Mm. Great. Happy with you? I've got a big problem. You don't appear to be enjoying the harmonies as much as doing the lead vocals. Yeah. What happens if we say there's going to be 15 or 16 you've got to learn in a month? I could do it. I could do it. I could do it. I could get my pen, my walkman, <laughs> my paper, my lyrics. As the days went on, like, in London, it just got worse and worse and worse. It just got really intense, and it even got to the point where I was sobbing. I was just crying, because you think about yourself, but you think about other people. And I just couldn't believe that I was getting through. And it got to the stage where there were so many emotions going on in your head, you kind of think, can I take one more day this? You know, at one point I was going to leave. I was just going to go because it was just getting that intense. And I kind of thought, what's the point of putting yourself through all this torment if you're going to go anyway? I said the winning post's there, Danny. It's the tapes there. You've got to break through there. Yeah. He's really down. Yeah. He's down. Danny's really down. I asked Nigel to have a word with him. I said he's given up. He's he out. I feel so you're a little down today. Why? <laughs> Danny, you've done really well then. He said it's just the whole thing's going on top of me now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people who've got really good talent and, you know, I think they've really got good voices and I haven't exactly been, like, the most loudest person or anything. I, I'm quite, quite a person and people who've got really good personalities that come through, but so you feel like you kind of want to give your place up for someone, you know what I mean? Because he's not, you know, show busy in any way. I think he's in awe of everyone else that's around. Yeah. It's crying. And so I was thinking, right. If I walk out and just leave, I'll never know what's going to happen. I'll never know if I could have made the band or whether it would have just been a waste of time. So I just carried on. When tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. I didn't think I was going to get through because, personally, I'm a quiet person. There was a lot of characters during the audition, a lot of strong characters. Yeah. London was over, and all I wanted to do really was get back home, see my family. But at the same time, you knew that down the line, there's going to be another ordeal. Are you in the band or are you out the band? And it's just going to start again. So that was playing on my mind. <laughs> Finding out was one of the biggest anticlimaxes ever because as soon as I found out, I couldn't ring anybody. I mean, obviously, I rang my mum, um, but then she couldn't ring anybody. <laughs> there was just, it's happened. And then the next thing was, well, now I've got to disappear off the face of the earth. I was practicing at my old college, the academy, but my brother came from his rehearsals. He was in a show at the time. He came to sit with me. We were laughing. It was really, it was just nice because we were just waiting. He said to me, look, if you don't get in, we'll go down the pub. And if we do, we'll go down the pub. And it was fine until Nikki arrived. No more smiles. Everything went really quiet. That was one time I really remember trying to read the situation, thinking, what is going on? When Nikki did speak, that's when I, I did think I haven't got in because everything was so solemn by the time she'd got there. And we were extremely pleased with the final 10 but then when we got down to the final 10 it made it even harder because there was 10 yeah. people there and what we really did have to go on was the overall look of the band mm -hmm. so um, this is my first one of today mm -hmm. and uh, Mylene you've made it to the final <gasps> five Um, we were so thrilled with you. <laughs> it's happened and then the next thing was, well, now I've got to disappear off the face of the earth. It was just, there was nothing I could do. It was really, really strange. I walked up the road with my bottle of champagne and the keys to the house that I didn't even know where I was meant to live. But I couldn't tell anyone. <laughs>